Well, hey guys, I'm here at Walgreens. In this video, we're gonna go in and shop for skincare products for dark circles, puffy under eyes, all the eye products we're gonna check out. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Andrea. I'm a board certified dermatologist. If you like skincare, anti-aging tips, consider subscribing, or you can follow me on TikTok or Instagram. I post there a lot too. So in my videos, I always emphasize you don't need an eye cream. You don't need an eye cream. The moisturizer that you use on your face should be more than adequate to use around your eyes. But a lot of people deal with certain issues around the eyes. They're always looking for products to address those. And because the skin around the eyes is so delicate and thin, prone to irritation, some products that are meant to go on the rest of the face are too irritating for around the eyes. So you have special eye care products. So let's go check those out. I'll talk about the ingredients and the different concerns that happen around the eyes. Morning puffiness is a common under eye concern. Around the eyes you also get bony resorption that displaces fatty tissue and can lead to puffy under eye bags. And if you just have fluid retention, watching your salt in your diet can help. Now, topical caffeine in an eye cream can temporarily improve the look of under eye puffiness as well as dark circles. This particular one from Vichy is not <gasps> cheap. Uh, it has caffeine in it. While not a drugstore brand, I do believe The Ordinary has a good caffeine serum and The Inky List has a caffeine eye cream. Those would be more affordable alternatives. Here's one from Bioderma, the Sensi Bio Eye. This likewise has caffeine in it. Most eye creams are gonna be free of fragrance. Fragrance is a common allergen, can be pretty irritating. And while some people enjoy it or whatever in their skincare products, because the skin around the eyes is so delicate, they often will leave that out of eye products. Fructo oligosaccharides, these are likely moisturizing. Using humectants to the delicate skin in the eyes can have a plumping effect, this is temporarily smooth out wrinkles and fine lines. That looks promising. How much is that? $19.90, less expensive. Lists I Do All Things, Deep Puffing and Brightening Eye Gel. It has horse chestnut extract. As odd as it may seem, horse chestnut extract has been shown to improve swelling. It's variable in terms of the outcome, but anyways, that's in there, as well as a variety of humectants to help hydrate and smooth wrinkles. And this one likewise has caffeine, $22.99. One type of hyperpigmentation that can be occurring under the eyes is actually the result of um, irritation in the deeper layers of the skin. It can cause capillary leakage. Blood leaks out into the deeper layers of the skin. As that breaks down, it creates this kind of brownish pigment. It's not actual melanin from the cells that make pigment. So many skin brightening ingredients won't actually address that type of hyperpigmentation because many skin brightening ingredients address hyperpigmentation by targeting the enzyme tyrosinase that leads to melanin production. Whereas in this type of hyperpigmentation, it's actually due to breakdown of blood from capillary leakage from inflammation. So that might be one reason why your dark under eye circles are not responding to certain products, ingredients. The other reason is that with age, we have bony resorption and loss of bone around the bones of the eyes. It makes our eye opening actually bigger. The skin starts to sag, you get a prominent tear trough. And as that tear trough becomes prominent, the under eye skin kind of gets pulled down. You can see stuff underneath it more, ob more obviously, and that looks dark and discolored. And ingredients that address pigment are not gonna touch that. That type of under eye dark circle is related to volume loss. Autologous fat transfer is a procedure that can rejuvenate that, but for the most part, topical skincare ingredients, they're not really gonna target that type of dark under eye circle. And what's this Burt's Bees Hydrating Eye Gel? Is this just, a, just another moisturizing eye product? Ooh, this one has fragrance in it, so I would recommend avoiding that around the eyes. Speaking of fragrance, or a cautionary note, some people have dark under eye circles, puffiness, problems around the eyes because they either have eczema and they're always rubbing their eyes or they're allergic to something that is coming in contact with the eyes. So you keep putting stuff on, hoping to have an eye cream that works only to have it be worsened by an ingredient that you're allergic to. You can be allergic to ingredients in your nail polish and they commonly are transferred to the delicate skin of the eyelids. We're here in the greeting card section. 
Greetings. Here's another caffeine containing product from Garnier in a roller ball to help depuff. And it also has vitamin C. Vitamin C is an antioxidant. It may help with hyperpigmentation and it may help reduce oxidative stress from exposure to environmental stressors like ultraviolet radiation, infrared radiation, pollution, visible light, smoking, etc. Now ascorbic acid may also help to boost collagen production. This doesn't have ascorbic acid, it has ascorbyl glucoside, a stabilized form of vitamin C. Hasn't really been shown to get into the skin and do all of that, but it's there for whatever it's worth. And then, what is this beige one? Oh, this one has a sheer tint to it. That's actually advantageous because iron oxides and tinted products can help uh, potentially protect against visible light, which drives hyperpigmentation as well as oxidative stress in the skin. So as I mentioned, the skin around the eyes is one of the first areas for the visible signs of skin aging to show up. Not only because the skin there is very thin, but you blink your eyes about 10,000 times a day and there are about 22 different muscles around the eyes and you blink your eyes about 10,000 times a day and the skin is very delicate and very thin around the eyes and people often forget to protect their eyes with a sunscreen. So uh, one way to ward off the visible signs of skin aging around the eyes is to apply sunscreen. Unfortunately, a lot of sunscreens burn, sting, they run into the eyes. So I suggest looking for a mineral sunscreen, which will have zinc, and it might also have titanium dioxide. And I also suggest looking for one that is water resistant, that way it doesn't run into your eyes. Those tend to be relatively well tolerated. This one by Cetaphil is good, SPF 50. You get the more liquid formula. This has more of a matte finish. I rather like it. Um, but an even safer bet sometimes is to choose a baby mineral sunscreen. These tend to be even milder in the sense, less likely to burn or sting. This one by Eucerin seems promising. I reviewed a few of their new sunscreens, but that would be an option. Or this one by Banana Boat Sensitive. See, zinc, titanium, free of fragrance, common allergen. Now, those are going to leave a white cast, but around the eyes, that is something you can easily camouflage once it dries down with the cosmetics, and it, it tends to not be as noticeable around the eyes. Unfortunately, it will settle into the creases of your upper eyelid. There's not much you can do about that. You could try setting it with a mineral powder, either makeup or one of these mineral... SPF powders that can help reduce the creasing as well as shine. Speaking of volume loss in the eyes, I mean, you know, that's a main reason for seeing more discoloration, prominent tear troughs, volume loss. The combination of repetitive motion plus easy access of environmental stressors to annihilate the collagen leads to more thinning and prominent wrinkles. Topical retinol may help to improve collagen production. So unfortunately, retinol around the eyes can be very irritating. I do suggest choosing a retinol eye product rather than just using your retinol product that you use on your, the rest of your face, just because I think it can be better tolerated in my experience. This also has panthenol, which is moisturizing, and polyhydroxy acids, zinc gluconate, copper gluconate. It's helpful for moisture retention and helps smooth out the skin around the eyes. Then Olay has a ton of retinol eye products. Specifically, they have their Retinol 24, a night moisturizer for the eyes. Also has niacinamide in it. Typically, niacinamide is relatively well tolerated, can be used around the eyes. Some people find it very irritating, however. So if that's you, you would want to avoid it. But niacinamide is anti-inflammatory, so it can help with hyperpigmentation. And niacinamide also helps reduce oxidative stress in the skin and can reduce redness. Some pigment may be re actually related to redness and irritation. <music> Tired, dehydrated eyes, the eye gel, niacinamide. This is just a moisturizer with niacinamide. You can just use your regular moisturizer around your eyes. Dark circles, wrinkles, and puffiness. Another niacinamide moisturizer for around the eyes. 
and then one with collagen peptide in it. Collagen is just in skincare products, it's a humectant. It doesn't actually get into the skin and change your collagen. But man, what's the eye lifting serum? Do you believe in magic? That's my way of saying uh, that doesn't look like it's gonna do much. At first glance, I thought the sudden change under eye firming serum might be one of those, like the Peter Thomas Roth Firm X product I reviewed for you guys. It has that product had has silicates in it that kind of dry down and have a temporary tightening effect, but I'm not seeing that as an ingredient here. I just see some humectants, hyaluronic acid, and preservatives. So I don't know that that's going to give a sudden change, but if it does, it's likely temporary. Here we have Neutrogena's Healthy Skin Moisturizer for the eyes with alpha hydroxy acid. That can help to firm the skin as well as improve the look of sunspots around the eyes. And this product also has ascorbic acid. Now, I've told you guys in videos before, ascorbic acid, that's vitamin C. It, um, it's not the most stable ingredient. It's difficult for it to penetrate the skin. So, but if it actually does get in, it may help in improving collagen sy synthesis along with the alpha hydroxy acid. What's the AHA in this? glycolic acid. This also has urea in it, which is good for improving the function of the skin barrier around the eyes. That looks promising. Eye creams, like I say, you don't need one. They can be a money suck, because this is like probably one of the least expensive ones we've come across. The eye repair cream, which is a generic version of the CeraVe eye repair cream. Both are good. Um, and unless it's an active ingredient like retinol or vitamin C, it can be irritating around the eyes from your facial product. Stuff like this, it's like just use a CeraVe moisturizer to your face. Um, ceramides and niacinamide, they can be helpful for around the eyes, but you can find that in a basic moisturizer that's fragrance free. Yeah, here's a major reason for dark circles, all that pollen on my windshield, <laughs> triggering those seasonal allergies. All right, y'all, those are all the eye products they had in Walgreens. Quite a few, no surprise. Eye creams are a hot ticket item. There are tons of them. They must be a big money maker, and they are expensive. You really don't need one, and even if you have dark circles, puffiness, I would say don't really spend your time hunting around for a good eye cream that's gonna help that. Because a lot of times, there are seriously factors underlying these issues for which an eye cream is really just not gonna address. For example, if you've got seasonal allergies, which right now, uh, I'm practically coated in pollen, rubbing your eyes is gonna trigger capillary leakage, inflammation, that's gonna lead to discoloration. Products aren't gonna address that. Now, antihistamines to treat your allergies will help calm all that down. That rubbing also leads to puffiness. Products, you know, they may temporarily alleviate that, they really are not gonna correct that issue. And then when it comes to age-related change around the eyes, like I said, your eyes are the first area of your face to experience change, or probably where you're gonna notice aging first. Again, you got resorption of bone around the eyes that makes the eye socket larger, everything around it sags, you get crepiness, you get eye bags, your eyes appear smaller, more puffiness, Malar festoons in some people. Eye creams are not going to correct that. That type of change, once you get to that, that stage, moisture can help smooth out fine lines and wrinkles. Retinol may help in boosting up collagen production to kind of smooth out crow's feet. But a lot of that age-related sagging volume loss could be potentially replaced by like autologous fat transfer, which is a procedure. But eye care products are really not gonna do much. And you have to be careful because you really can start getting yourself into uh, a tricky territory where you end up developing a irritation or an allergy. It causes more rubbing of the eyes, more inflammation in the skin, and just worsens this problem tremendously. Do not neglect sun protection, including sunscreen, broad spectrum, SPF 30 or higher every single day. Because a lot of sunscreens sting and burn around the eyes, I suggest a mineral sunscreen. Those tend to be easier to tolerate around the eyes. And one that's water resistant is less likely to run into your eyes themselves. 
and again sunglasses for sure so i hope this video was helpful to you guys on the end slate i'm going to put my recent video shopping for products for hyperpigmentation i go over different ingredients that address dark spots so if that sounds of interest to you definitely check it out i go through target you know target <laughs> Target always has something good to look at. But if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.